Hello. Okay. So I get to tell my story, and um, I get to tell it to a bunch of wonderful people who, um, like myself, raise money for a living. And I want to say, wouldn't it be so awesome if every time we started a project, we knew it was going to be a success? And wouldn't it be great if we knew that it would be such a success that one day you would be asked to write a book and it would actually be published and that there would be a major motion picture made about your project. That would be awesome, huh? But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, so I want to tell you a little bit. I know when I was looking at... Um, the agenda for today and tomorrow. Um, today was the day that of inspiration. And that's what I want to do. And I hope that my story will inspire you because I'm just a normal, really normal person. And I'm so much like you in so many ways. And I, I was able to do something that was far bigger than myself and you're doing the same thing. So I want to encourage you, and I'm going to start with telling you how it even came about. I was not in philanthropy at the time. I was uh, working in sales, and I had uh, worked in sales in several different, I'd sold everything, everything to do with office I had sold. And I had a bank that asked me to come and be on their staff to help raise capital for a bank. And I knew nothing about banking, but um, people relied on my skills of networking and getting people to give money. It's no different than what you're doing. I was getting people to give money, but it was an investment uh, for them. And um, my husband was a coach, a high school football coach. And he also worked for our county for parks and recreation. And we had four children. And like my husband, who um, we, we married really young, he, was, he played a ball very successfully, got a scholarship to Vanderbilt University, played there, he was drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals, played in the Super Bowl. But that was a long, long time ago, but he had done all those things. And, and we had four children, and they were all just like my husband, extremely talented, extremely athletic. Even our youngest, our little girl, our little precious girl, is probably the best athlete in our family. And um, so we spend our time at the ball field. If you have children and you have children that are athletes, you've done that. You know what I'm talking about. That was our life. And uh, many of my clients were at the ball field. You know, you did business at the ball field. Your life, you revolved around that. And so that's where our life was. And my husband being the coach of this football team and all three of our boys being on this team, we saw that it was much, much more. Obviously, you know, he didn't do it for, you know, just for the money. There's other things. He had a Vanderbilt education. He could have made more money doing a lot of other professions. But it was something he loved, but it was also something that we knew that we were called to do. And many of these young men that he spent more time with, even the ones that did have dads in the home, you know, you spend more time with a coach than you do with anyone else. And um, some of these boys didn't have dads in the home. And we would end up having these boys over to our home on Thursday nights before Friday night game, and we would feed them, and we would let them see what a family unit looked like, and we would listen to them, encourage them, and boy, we saw a change. We saw a change in the young men that we had uh, time to invest in. We saw a change in our community. And that's what our life was, uh, was about, was about making change, making a difference, and it being at the ball field. 
So one Sunday morning, we're getting ready for church, and uh, my kids were watching ESPN Outside the Lines. And if you know that program, it's real heartwarming stories, you know, that grip you. And the kids were like, Mom, Dad, you got to come in here and see this. It's amazing. And so we went in and sat down, and as a family watched this ESPN special, and it was on a community in Barrow, Alaska, which is the most northern American settlement with no roads going into it, and they... I do not have, they can't grow grass. It's on the frozen tundra. I lived in Florida. I knew nothing about tundra. I'd never been to Alaska. I'd never seen it. But looking from the series that they were showing, the, the documentary that they were showing, it's desolate. You can't grow grass. You can't grow trees. You can't grow anything like that. It's on the frozen tundra. But they had started a football program. Why? Because they had such a need. There was a huge dropout rate. There was a huge suicide rate. There was a huge uh, drug, alcohol use. They were losing their young people. And so they did a survey when they had some money that the state had appropriated. And they said, what would keep your kids in school? And they said, well, if we had a football program, we'd come to school if we had a football program. Well, you can imagine how, you know, controversial that was because the closest team was 500 miles away. So they were going to have to fly to play every opponent. They didn't have a field to play on because they can't grow grass. So they took a, a, a gravel quarry, like where they stored their heavy equipment that was all gravel. That's where they played, okay? They were getting all cut up, and it was, it was a mess. But, and the educators, they even, they did a great job interviewing them and them saying that, you know what, we don't need to spend money on this. It only affects a small sector. We need to spend money on computers and books and things like that for education. But when we saw that, I, I knew. I thought, wow, that's going to work. That's going to work. Look at those people. There they go. They're doing something amazing. And I told my husband as we were finishing getting ready for church that Sunday, I said, you know what? I said, I understand they're... Uh, that they need, you know, I understand that they need computers and books and things like that. I said, but what good is it if the kids don't go to school? What good is it if there's such a high teen suicide rate? What good is that? I said, that football program is going to save their lives. And he said, yes, you're right. Okay, we go to church that Sunday. My husband, like I said, he was working for parks and recreation for our community as well as coaching. And he had been overseeing a big project of putting some turf fields in our area for our youth in Florida. And I'm going to tell you, that Sunday in church, it just was like, if you need that for your children, how much more do they need that in Alaska, in Barrow, Alaska, the most northern settlement that they cannot grow grass? And that was so strong on me. And you guys, you know, my family's used to me coming up with crazy ideas, so they weren't too blown away by it. But I couldn't wait to tell them. And we got to the car, and before we could get the door shut, I told, I told my family, I said, I've got an announcement to make. I said, the Lord showed me we're going to raise the money, and we are going to give them an artificial turf field like ours, and we're going to teach them how to play football. And my oldest son, um, and if you're from the state of South Carolina, and you're a Clemson fan. My son's Kyle Parker. He was quarterback there. There you go, right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, but my, my oldest son, um, he, said, he said, Mom, that's impossible. There's no roads going into that place. And you know what? He was right. It was impossible. It was a crazy idea. But I couldn't let it go. And I kept talking about it and talking about it. Like many of you do. When you have an idea, you keep talking about it and talking about it. And one day, as my kids were getting ready for school, and we, were at, we brought the subject up again, and, and my son, who had been started to be heavily recruited by different schools to come to college because he was a phenomenal athlete, and he worked really hard to get to that point. And Mom was really screwing that up. And, uh, and he said, Mom, he said, this is a good idea. But if it doesn't work, it's going to be really embarrassing. And I was like, I know, I know, because it was getting some publicity. People started, they started writing about it, you know, and, and, and I started being asked to come to Rotary and speak about it. And uh, 
I would have people come up. This happened at a rotary in, uh, in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. A man comes up to me afterwards. Now, we're in Florida, okay? He worked for the largest architectural firm that built schools and playgrounds in our area. And he said, I have Arctic architecture experience and training. I, can I help you? I'm like, yes, yes, you can help me. I had others that came from, again, from different connections that we would make just from ordinary people, just like us. You know, I have a friend that is president of a transportation company. Can you help me? My son, Kyle, the one that said, Mom, it can't be done, comes home from school. Mom, this girl in my class gave me this business card of her dad. He's very high up at UPS, and she said he'd help you. UPS did. Help me. Okay. So on and on and on and on. I went to our head football coach, told him the idea. He said, putting a turf field, that's not enough, Kathy. We need to bring the team to Jacksonville. And they need to stay in our homes. They need to see what it's like to be a student athlete. So we started on that venture. Of course, you know, we told them, we said, if you can get there, then we'll pay for all your expenses while you're there. And again, you know, having to raise money. Um, they didn't have the money. And, um, and I didn't think they were coming. And it was going to be really bad. It was going to fall apart. And then a businessman, a businessman gave $40,000 in their area for them to be able to come down. It changed. It changed our life. It changed our community. It changed their community. We taught them how to play. We taught this, these coaches that... And, and when you ask these kids, when they, and they did this on that ESPN special, how many of you have ever had any experience playing football? Now, these are high school kids. There are only two that raised their hand. My kids have been playing ball since they were five. You know, so, you know, it was, it was totally different. But for our children to be able to, my sons to be able to say, this is how you do it, to be able to watch film with them, this is how, this is what you look for. Our kids were able to do that. They made they were able to change a community's life because they were able to give back a talent, something they had, something that, you know, money cannot buy. You know, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to give back. And that happened. And we sent the team back. It was wonderful. It was all good. But I had promised them a turf field, an artificial turf field. And I'm going to tell you some of the challenges. And, I'm gonna, and I, I really want to focus on some of these. And the story is, is so amazing. That's why you really need to buy the book, y'all. And, um, <laughs> and see the movie, right, honey? That's right. Um, but um, I can't go over everything. But I want to focus on some of the challenges because you'll be able to resonate with these. Um, like my son said, if it didn't happen, it was going to be really embarrassing. Um, transportation massive. I had no clue what I was getting into. I had no idea that there was a barge that left one time a year, and if the heaviest of those products were not on that barge, then it would be a whole nother year before those products could get there. I had no idea about a whole lot of stuff, okay? And it fell through so many times that I I, I could just, you know, it could, I could tell you hours of just things that happened over and over again. But, Redford, you said it this morning when you said that you had to change. That is so true. I had to change my mindset because if every time an obstacle happened, if, if I didn't persevere through it, it, we, it, it would have never, never happened. And there were a lot of people that came along my side. But I want to I share this with you. It was, uh, we'd already had the team down, a lot of publicity, ESPN, the story went national, it hit the Associated Press, we started getting donations from all over the United States. Um, it seemed like it was going to happen, okay? Um, but then we started hitting tremendous roadblocks, one after the other, one after the other, we're transporting 650,000 pounds into a place that has no roads going into it, of course. And... I had gotten a phone call from the transportation specialist, and he said the products need to be in Seattle, Washington, and they need to be at the barge company. It's a tote, um, and they need to be there um, by such and such date. And I was like, okay. So I called the turf company, and it was rubberized mulch. It was the heaviest of the products, and they were coming in big pallets out of Edmonton, Canada. And I called, and I said, okay, it's time to release those products, and, and this is where you take them, da 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 and they responded with, well, we're not releasing anything. We're not releasing anything because 
you've gotten a lot of publicity on this and we know you don't have the money yet and you da 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 and we're not we're not we're we're not releasing one thing. So we didn't have the products. And so I called the transportation specialist back. I said, I need more time. He said, Kathy, there's no more time. And I said, well, what are other options do we have? There's no more options. And I just started crying. Okay, this was just one of the many times. But my husband, my husband, you know, he, he just said, you know what? Sometimes you have to realize that you've done the best you can do. And you just, there's some things, Kathy, that just can't be done. And I was like, okay, you're right. I need to call the media. I need to call. I need to call these people, tell them they're not going to be able to get the fill. We just can't do it. It's just impossible. It's impossible. And, um, and we'd heard that over and over because every time when we called to get quotes from transportation companies, they'd say, oh, that can't be done. That, that can't be done. And, uh, and so we were, we, were, we were at a loss. And so I went to bed that night, and I'm going to tell you, I was mad at God. Because I felt like God had given me the idea, and I was like, I was mad. I was like, why would you tell me to do something when you knew it couldn't be done? I'm so embarrassed, you know. I've put everything at jeopardy. My family's mad at me. My kids are embarrassed. You know, I've got this job at a bank where credibility is everything, and now I've taken all this money. I don't even know how to give some of it back, you know. I'm probably going to lose my job. I mean, everything was at risk. And that night was a tough night. But I'm going to tell you, the thing I woke up with that next morning was God did give me that vision and that I was the only one that could do it. And if I had enough faith, that was enough. And I'm going to tell you, there's some of you out here, the challenge is you wouldn't be in this room today if you could do it by yourself. You wouldn't be in this room today if you didn't need to be encouraged and need that encouragement to get through Okay, and let me tell you, you've got things that are way bigger than the normal person could do, but you've got that, and that's something that you're inspired to do, and you can inspire others to come alongside and help you, and that next morning I woke up, I was more determined than ever, and I had not a clue, but you know what I did? I, I, I was working, and so I went to, it just so happened that the architectural firm was my client with the bank, so I went to pay them a visit, and I went to the architectural firm, and they sat down with me, and they felt sorry for me, really, and they were like, okay, Kathy, let's, you know, and, and my friend was like, Kathy, these things take years. This is not a, this is not, it had only been a few months since we even announced what we were doing, and he said, you know, these things take years. This is a three to five year project, and so they started asking me questions like, do you have a permit to put the field in Alaska? No, and they wrote it down on a sticky note and put it on the table, and they said, do you have the money to pay it for it? No, everything, I mean, it was on and on and on and on and on. And I said, I know this looks really bad, but, <laughs> but I think we just got to talk to the right people. And I said, I've got a friend that's driving around and he's getting the elders together. Okay. So he does. He gets the native elders, all men from Alaska, Anupiat Indian men, together to talk with me, a white woman from Florida that they've never met. But we sat there in that room in, in St. Augustine, Florida, and the men that were in there with me, they were busy and they had to leave. But I sat there and I listened to these men and I listened to the, uh, them tell the stories about welling and I listened to them tell stories about their community these were my donors, folks. These were the ones that I was serving, and I got it at that moment. I listened. I loved every second. I, I bonded with them, and I told them, I said, I don't know for sure that this will work, but let me tell you, my husband's a coach. We pour into these young men. Let me tell you about the lives that we've seen change, and I think the same thing could happen in your community. And before I got off that phone call, they said, Kathy Parker, and of course, you know, they speak Inupiaq. I speak Southern. I'm sure I had as, just as much trouble understanding them as they did me, but they spoke in very broken English. We give you the land. We give you <laughs> the equipment. We'll give you a foreman. 
We'll give you everything you need. We'll sign your contract. And that day, over the phone, things shifted tremendously. I'm going to end this story with telling you that there is a bright blue, like you see, like my shirt, uh, field that sits right on the Arctic Ocean because that's the land the natives owned. That's the land they gave us for that field. In the most northern American settlement, they've changed their name now. We've practiced a whole bunch, and it's called Upkigavik, okay? They've changed the name from Barrow to Upkigavik. And we have made friends with these people. They have changed our lives. We've changed their lives. Um, we are going to be doing a movie that uh, producing a movie that is going to highlight the most amazing people that I've ever met. And it is going to tell the story. But it's a story about people giving. It's a story about people not giving up. It's a story that res will resonate with all of us. And when I got to go uh, to watch this game being played on this field. And by the way, just a, just a little uh, footer here. We, we did a press conference in Florida in February of 2007. Their first game was played on the field in August of 2007. In less than six months, 650,000 pounds of products, almost a million dollars uh, worth of products and services was raised and it was installed. The products got there so late, but in 10 days, they, they put together this field that usually takes at least a month or so uh, to construct, but it was done in 10 days and, it, and a game was played in front of national media, okay? It, um, I was the person of the week on ABC Dateline and NBC Nightline, and um, it has just absolutely changed our lives and it's changed the community's lives. Um, that's what hope does. That's what hope does. So today, I hope that my story can encourage you that when it does get tough, because we had so many times where it was so tough, it looked like it wasn't going to happen. There was no way. Those things happened so many times. There were so many that came against us. There were people wanting to sue me. I mean, I, I tell you, I could go on and on about the things that happened. There were people that were mad at me when I stood up at a press conference and said, we're going to raise this money, and it's for something you will never see, your kids will not play on. And you, I mean, there were people that were furious at me that if you want to raise money, raise it for here. Don't raise it for there. You know, I mean, it is just it's one of those stories that if you need to be encouraged, you need to, you definitely need just to remember that we are called to do extravagant, extraordinary things far greater than we can do on our own. And I'm going to end with wanting to bless all of you. I, I hope that all of you, when you look at the projects that you're tasked with, that you just remember that if God gave you the vision and you have the faith to see it through, then that is enough. I'm Hani Korngold, producer of the film Touchdown on the Tundra, a movie based on a true story so compelling, people haven't stopped talking about it for the last eight years. Finally tonight, our Persons of the Week. Your time for our popular segment, Making a Difference, about those among us who are doing just that. For Kathy Parker, football is much more than just a game. She's seen what it's the done for her unlikely heroes son. of a struggling high school football team. Kathy who Parker their heard about the boys of Barrow and made it her mission by to help. But she got it done in just six months. Last Friday, the town turned out for the Whalers' first game on the new turf, their biggest fan in the stands. Way. They had a dream, she had a vision. You know, there are just some stories that uh, reverberate with our souls. I mean, we all have these violin strings running through our souls that when you pluck the strings just the right way, it makes you stand up and cheer. We live in an I generation, I phone, I pads, I whatever. And, and there are very few demonstrations of just selfless 
grace and selfless love. With themes like forgiveness and redemption and hope and courage and sacrifice, Touchdown on the Tundra is one of those stories. Touchdown on the Tundra is a story that has universal themes. Even though it's a story about football, it's not your typical football story. It's a story about two moms that come together from opposite sides of the earth to make a difference, to make a difference for their boys, for their community. One from the tropics of Florida and another mom from the frigid tundra of Barrow, Alaska, getting together to do the impossible and bring football to a place that you have to post snipers at the edge of the fields to ward off the polar bears. You know, I didn't have all the skills necessary or the resources necessary, but stepped out in faith and rallied a whole lot of other people that came that wanted to be a part of something so much bigger than themselves, and they made it happen. This is absolutely a movie that is going to pluck heartstrings. It's going to cause us to want to go do something good for somebody else because that's what it's about. Two mothers getting together to try to save their boys, but by saving those two boys, a town is saved, a town is re-energized, a renaissance happens in this town. And I think that's a story that needs to be told because that can encourage others to step out in the same way for things that they believe that are too difficult or they're not talented enough to do. I think that's what's so compelling to me about this story. It's a great example of how one tiny act of grace can affect so much change in a community. You know, I think that's the way you save the world, is by saving your sons. The heroes in this society are so often the people who see a need and do something instead of looking the other way. I'm so thankful that I didn't give up, and I'm so thankful that I, I took the challenge. In the end, Parker says this turf can be a field of dreams for all of Barrow, Alaska. With kids who never knew beating the odds was even an option until they got a chance to actually do it. Okay. All right, he said I should come back and say something. So um, just to let you know, uh, the book uh, titled Northern Lights uh, comes out June the 25th. It can be, be pre-ordered right now. And um, over in the exhibit hall, uh, you'll see a card. It has at the bottom all of the retailers and, and all that you can go on to pre-order that book. And also, uh, the movie is, um, we are in the pre-production now. Honey Corngold is the main producer on the film. And uh, we expect to be making some announcements very soon about the timeline on that. And, um, and hopefully that will be in your theaters um, very, very soon. And I want all of you to support it, okay? <laughs> Thank you.